All right, thanks again, Ryan, just for having me, give me the privilege to just do some crazy stuff like this. Yeah. And also thanks to Ross for having us. It's also really humbling to have us here. It's great. So this piece is actually a, a sequel off of that first one you actually heard a year ago, and you've heard the sequel, Black Like Me Too. And I actually wrote this with a friend in mind who actually passed away two weeks ago from a, a shooting down in downtown Arcana, so yeah. I often feel inadequate. And some of you know this feeling, but all you have to offer the world is an accord to stereotypes. Or questions like, what's your favorite color? Will you be my best friend? That were once asked out of childlike innocence have been shaped by hands of cynicism and sarcasm. Designed to cleverly cage your culture with cunning curiosity. Do you rap? Can you dance? And if you pass for anything of this fashion, you qualify yourself to walk their runway of shame, becoming the butt of black jokes as snicker circle your ebonics and cultural colloquialisms, which are foreign, foolish, and filthy to society's prescriptive grammar globe. So if you is chopping it up with your folks, talking about how them J's be dope, your intelligence be irrelevant, because it's assumed that your lack of linguistics deserves pity from those convinced that you're the problem. And their opinion, if you only value police compliance, exercise rights to remain silent, then there will be worries about getting shot or see riots. And church folks turn backs on black issues, preaching a colorblind rhetoric that says, ignore differences altogether, believing that their black cousin or dark-skinned BFF has enlightened them, and in turn remain holy and homogenous. Believe me, I have felt those pains, accustomed to being the white elephant in suburban town church buildings, amongst many, many Caucasian brothers and sisters who have probably driven through the ghetto, but never intentionally walked its streets, grafted souls to blood-stained sidewalks, run hands over beautifully spray cam murals of the broken, yet sit in circles of kumbaya discussing what's wrong with God's church when I know peers peering through bullet box windows, dying in the hood without hope. Though I bite my tongue, knowing after I share the worries within the theater of my mind, I'll be labeled ludicrous, leaving others to flip the script, accusing me of playing victim with the way my people act as the problem. So I stop searching for solutions. Uncomfortably laugh when late as friends joke about me running on CP time, giggling, trying to make sense of feelings that don't make sense. And I find this penny for my thought that you also feel inadequate with an inadequacy that I can't ever relate with. Like all you have to offer the world is in accord to stereotypes. Or questions I once asked out of childlike innocence have been shaped by hands of ignorance and obstinance. Who's your favorite country singer? Is your parents rich? Is you rich? And if you happen to have cheese, great. We've shredded you under our assumptions. Nicknaming you that one white kid at lunch as if no other characteristics matter. Unless, of course, you're the white kid that raps, living in the trap, playing craps, convincing ourselves that you look like Eminem. The freckles frolic face like field fire, and hair follicles are as red as a cardinal's feathers. And women are given the hardest time, seen as prey to us young-minded predators who place confidence in our onyx skin that make us bolder, believing that every young lady wants to rock with us. And if we turn down our request to kick it, Claiming that we have no game, unable to play our cards right, and you're over 21, we bust out in concealed shame, claiming it's because we're blackjack. And let's not forget teachers who selflessly accept inner city placements, only to hand out F's to be deemed racist, though it was the student who chose not to study on a daily basis. And never forsake noble police officers who take heat for lousy deputies, burning under glares of those of different ethnicity, who view them all as enemy, as if every cop has urged to stop popping and imprison every black skinned boy and girl. This feeling, I'll never know, though youthful ignorance would have told me so. From elementary years that brought me many tears, from high school days of being called white boy by peers, teased, tackled, torn apart, topsy turvy to I'm too black to be friend and too white to hang out with on the weekends. Even with all these playground experiences that chuck wood chips into weeping eyes, I'll never understand the punch pressed in yours. But I don't have to. 
I don't have to experience nor point out difference to love you through oblivion. Because the Son of Man merged Jew and Gentile, parting pride and prejudice through his blood so red, see? We don't have to feel offended, nor exhaust brains with ways to reach culture. But realize, we all feel inadequate. We're all broken. And we all need to know love dearly. As I ponder this, I have no choice but to conclude that I'm white like you, and you're black like me, too. Mm.